York's mighty wall is a reminder that the city was more than a religious power. It was a military and political center vital for the control of North England from Roman times through the Middle Ages. These ramparts, some of which sit on the remains of the Roman wall, are mostly medieval, 14th and 15th century. Each of the town gates was heavily fortified, and I imagine pretty scary if you were trying to break in. Gaze up at the tower, imagining 10 archers behind the cross-shaped arrow slits. Keep an eye on those 12th century guards with their stones raised and primed to protect their town. Today, those walls seem only to protect the half-timbered charm. Ye old downtown York, much of it as car-free today as it was 500 years ago, is filled with characteristic old buildings. It feels made for window shopping, people watching, and strolling. York's rich history goes back much further the ruins of St. Mary's Abbey, once the wealthiest abbey in North England, are located in a lush and inviting park. In his fight with the Roman Catholic Church, Henry VIII saw the wealthy monasteries and convents as both a threat to his rule and some easy money. In what's called the dissolution, he dissolved the religious orders. He took their money and destroyed their great buildings. The Yorkshire Museum, actually built into the ruins of the abbey, tells the story of life here for the monks, how all that ended, and much more. The ancient Roman collection includes slice-of-life exhibits from cult figurines to the skull of a man killed by a sword blow to the head, making it graphically clear that the struggle between Romans and barbarians was a violent one. This fine 8th century Anglo-Saxon helmet shows a bit of barbarian refinement. And those Vikings, they wore some pretty decent shoes and actually combed their hair. The Middleham Jewel, an exquisitely etched 15th century pendant, is considered the finest piece of Gothic jewelry in Britain. To the noble lady who wore this on a necklace, it both helped her worship and protected her from illness. The back of it, which rested near her heart, shows the nativity. The front shows the Holy Trinity crowned by a sapphire, which people believed gave your prayers top priority with God. For a lively change of pace, look for the local Morris dancers who boldly keep centuries of dancing tradition alive. Mixing both pagan and Christian traditions, they're always ready to celebrate. Cheerleading the town through the return of spring, the harvest, your mother's birthday, whatever. For something a little weightier, visit York's National Railway Museum. Showing two centuries of British railroad history, it claims to be the biggest and best railroad museum anywhere. Fanning out from a grand roundhouse is a stunning array of beautifully preserved historic trains. A steam engine is sliced open, showing cylinders, driving wheels, and smoke box all in action. You'll trace the evolution of steam-powered transportation from very early trains like this 1830 stagecoach on rails with its crude steam engine to the aerodynamic Mallard, famous as the first train to travel at two miles per minute, a marvel back in 1938. 